Hey guys, I am recording this on Zoom, so I hope it all goes well. I am Beth, for those of you that don't know me, I'm sure you've seen my face around here before. I just want to thank you for being a part of this community thus far, even if this is your first video that you're watching. Welcome to you and a huge well done to you for taking steps to actually move your life towards something cleaner, fresher, more natural and away from those toxic products. Honestly, I do feel that the more we can tap into our own energy sources and our own intuition and guidance through life is when we can start removing these extra layers of chemicals um, and issues that go on within the cells. And I really do think it starts within the home. So this particular video is going to be talking about specifically cleaning products and moving away from what you've always bought at the shops, out of habit, and of course, out of convenience. This is going to be a video to give you a bit of background, to give you a little bit of motivation. Perhaps you've always considered buying something, using something homemade, but aren't quite sure how to navigate it, or aren't quite sure what to do, and really don't have enough motivation to do it. So this video, I hope, is going to show you all of that. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna share a screen with you. So. Let me see what I can do. Looking right so far. I've got the kids in the background, so I hope you don't mind. Okay, so how many cleaning products in your home can you actually think of? Can you think of just a couple? Maybe you've got heaps. Maybe you've got one for every single room. Maybe you've got one for every single job. Whatever the case is, there are probably more than one if you haven't started this journey already. Or if you have, perhaps you still have a few sitting around. I don't like waste and I don't have uh, the ability to pour anything down the drain because one, my brain stops me because I think of the ocean. But also two, we have a septic tank. So we can't use any bleach, we can't use any hardcore chemicals because it will ruin the pH levels of the septic tank. Um, so, I'm left to leave them in the home or put them in the bin and I don't like landfill. So when we moved, I tried to use up as much as I could. So it was kind of like leaving all the toxic products in that house. Um, and then when we came here, it was kind of starting fresh. The only thing I do have is a Pino Clean floor cleaner, which I bought in bulk from Costco when I was pregnant with Anna. So that's how long I've had it for. Um, I think I bought like four of them and I've still got one left i think one i left in the house that we moved from a couple of years ago so i have it there in case of emergency kind of thing but um i don't actually have any that i use on a consistent basis let's get into what i had okay so there's no judgment from me because this is what i had and the list goes on let me tell you a little story you'll see i've got down here a car window cleaner so this was actually a car cleaner that they were selling at the petrol station and it was supposed to be to do your tires, to do your windows of the car, but it was actually really potent. And I was like, this is great. It works. So I used it inside. I'd use it in the shower. I'd use it on the mirrors inside. And I remember having to put fans on and fully open windows because it was so bad. So I know I needed to get rid of it but I just thought I'll just keep using it because I didn't have any cognitive connection with what it was possibly doing. I just knew it stunk a lot. Um, okay, I also had the clean kitchen bench spray, brand name one of those. I had toilet cleaner, toilet bowl leave-in, floor cleaner, window cleaner, dishwashing liquid, hand soap, laundry powder. This is not including things like the toilet spray, the air fresheners, the bug spray, the itchy creams, the facial products, perfumes, makeup, etc., etc., etc. The list went on. Our cupboards full, full of products, full of toxic products, without knowing, and that's the problem. We don't know, so I'm going to tell you. So why do we care? Let me share with you what I started to discover. So this is part of this is part of the research from the environmental working groups. Their key findings. So. Air fresheners, these can tr trigger asthma and allergies. I went into an Airbnb when we moved from Singleton to Adelaide and they actually had one of these plug-in things in the wall. Girls, can you quiet down, please? They had one of these plug-in things in the wall in the bedroom. So as I was sleeping, I was like, what is that perfume smell? There's still something around. And sure enough, it was down below under the bed. So I immediately 
pulled it out and I had a little baby. Emily was only three weeks old and I just thought the damage that this has already done is made me, made me really sick. Okay, well, I'm, I'm doing a recording, so you need to put away things. I'll speak to you later. You'll be right. Anna, stop yelling, please. So fabric softeners and dryer sheets. These, um, I get really annoyed about these because now I can smell people's laundry powder, the fragrance within powders throughout everything that they have. But fabric softeners are another level. They're marketed at babies. They're marketed at little people. And we wonder why we've got problems with things like asthma and eczema. Aside from the food that we're eating, we're also putting it on top of our skin. And we're wondering why we've got issues. I mean, to me, this is just such a clear connection now. So if you're in this community, I want to say well done to you for getting this far. All right. Sure, sure. This is mum life right here. Single mum life right now. Oh, sorry. Okay, so the other thing is cleaning products with these artificial fragrances. So they, the companies aren't actually required to share what is within what they label fragrance. And it's classed as a trade secret. So by law, they can lock down whatever ingredients. There are a few other chemicals, chemical names that do the same. So it's a general blanket cover for any kind of more nasty product. So yes, they can be derived from petrochemicals. Yes, they can be a natural source, but we don't know. And we're not going to know. And that's the danger. Antibacterial products. I know you guys have heard a lot about these in 2020. These can develop the drug resistant superbug. So Although there, there's a lot of controversy around this, especially this year, but really there are alternatives. And we don't need to be using a heavy toxic loaded gel to eliminate germs. And I think it, that's as simple as it can be. Okay, so drain cleaners is a really big one as well. Of course, this includes things like oven cleaners, toilet. You know, you think of the most potent cleaners that you have, these guys are doing a great job in your sink, but what are they doing to your body as well? So we do have indications where there are people that have problems with their eyes and skin, um, but also their throat and their esophagus. And this in turn then can produce these lung irritated issues. If you have people that have a high sensitivity, you might find that some of the ingredients throughout all of these products that we're talking about, that they have a skin sensitivity almost immediately. And when they stop using that product, their skin will start to heal itself. So the good thing is our body always wants to be in homeostasis. It's always in homeostasis. It wants to get back to balance. So your body is always going to be healing itself, but we need to give it the space and the opportunity to do so. So bleach and ammonia, these guys are bad ones. People love bleach. They love it. They think it's going to clean their sheets. It's going to clean their bathroom. It's going to clean their bath their toilets, it's going to make everything look nice and it's going to give them a nice clean smell because that's what they associate with hospitals, with clinical type environments. And they think if my home smells like that, I've done a good job, my home is clean. But particularly in a home where we don't get outside enough, we don't have doors and windows open enough, we're poisoning ourselves. We are actually just poisoning ourselves. So the other side is the products that create suds, soapy suds. So this is when we're talking about our body, body soaps, our uh, bath soap, laundry detergent, hand soap. These guys have, as you can see on the screen, some pretty hard to pronounce chemicals, which is, I mean, also probably deliberate because if we're calling it something really hard, we're not going to be talking about this in general conversation. Oh, did you see that it's got diethylamyl, like no one's going to be saying things like that. We're going to just move on. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm just going to delete it from my brain and just ignore it. Pretend I didn't see it. And I am definitely guilty of this. So these guys are linked to carcinogens, um, organ toxicity. It becomes a little bit scary when I just want to note on that as well. If you're using like one product, maybe you have like a soapy body wash, but you have everything else low tox, 
look, you're doing your best. And it's not about getting rid of everything and throwing it all in the bin immediately. But it's just about being aware and trying to make as many changes as you can to lower your toxic load and lower the toxic load of the people in your home. So these things are body. Yes, it bounces back from having been exposed to these chemicals all the time. It, the toxin load uh, can be vastly reduced in our body, but we have problems when we have too much of it, when we eat poorly, when we sleep poorly, when we don't exercise to actually detox those toxins from our body and when we shut ourselves inside and we're not getting outside we're getting fresh air we're not getting sun it creates a world of problems and that's the world we're in now we we like being inside we like our technology we like to be exposed to radiation to a degree you know even sun is radiation i'm not going to go down that path but we like to be comforted within our homes not having to leave that that comfort zone and these guys fall into our comfort zone whole because they are convenient and they smell good and they make us feel good as far as what we think immediately we think that we're feeling good because the house smells clean we think we're feeling good because you know that perfumey bubble bath is all over our body and now i feel really girly and sensual but the problem is it is giving our body issues especially when it starts interrupting our hormone production and our entire immune system so I just want to read you this as well. Human exposure to chemicals in the environment is an increasing concern. Many chemicals have not been assessed for effects on ecosystems and human health. The health impacts of exposures to chemicals combinations remains largely untested. So that in itself is just scary stuff. We don't know. We don't know. We're, we're still in this moment of we know that these ingredients exist. We know we should probably avoid them but are we avoiding them? And now we've got to take the power back and ask ourselves those questions. Exposure to some chemicals have been linked to a range of conditions, asthma, allergies, autoimmune diseases. This is a big one. And again, an autoimmune diseases is a blanket cover for these immune issues that doctors don't really have enough information on. They can't tell you how it comes about. They can't tell you how to solve it in most cases. It becomes a really scary gray field where we actually don't have we feel that we don't have any kind of power around an autoimmune disease. Cancer, neurological impairment, birth defects and infertility. It's scary stuff. Okay, but I don't wanna scare you, I wanna make it easy to change. So what do we do? Buying at the supermarket is easier, buying out of habit is easier. Let me tell you, I know that. I know that even from a theoretical point of view that we studied that. We studied that when I did marketing at university, how people shop, how people buy, even when you know you go to the shops and those big brands, they pay for that space, eye level. So you want to pick them up. It's called double jeopardy. This is when big brands win and small brands lose consistently on a consistent basis because they're the ones that get the best spots. They can do two for one deals because they can afford it. They can be in your face. They can spend money on advertising. They are everywhere. And it's called brand salience when it's again and again and again. So when you're seeing for example, a toothpaste brand again and again and again, that's because they are the biggest, most likely, they are the biggest in the market. They have the backing of usually a bigger company that has other products within the field, within the supermarket field, and they can pick and choose one, when and what they're spending their money on. This becomes huge. This means that our smaller brands that are more natural products aren't well known. Luckily, with social media being free, we do get the opportunity to see more natural brands. And luckily, even though it does seem pretty creepy, with our phone being able to pick up what we like, we are having these better marketed to us. But again, that becomes scary because you think, I'm buying such something natural, but maybe you're just buying a green wash product. And then that means that you could be buying something that looks nice on the outside and it looks environmentally friendly and looks natural and looks great for your body, but it could still have these ingredients in it. So just because you're buying something that says eco or environment or earth or green or whatever on the outside does not mean that the products on the inside are doing that. And it's up to you to do the research. Look up the ingredients. And while I'm talking about this, I want to show you an app called chemical maze this is a app it's a red little app and in in there you can look up exactly what products mean what and it'll give you a little happy face or a sad face or an awkward face and it'll tell you the kind of testing that's been around what it actually means for 
your body and where these chemicals are derived from. And it just gives you a bit, bit more of empowerment for yourself, for your home. Okay, what's next? So let's get to some easy recipes. Multi-purpose spray. I've done a video previously on this as well. One to two squirts of doTERRA on guard cleaning concentrate, 20 to 30 drops of essential oils. And that's quite high. You can do 10 to 20. It's up to you. I love doing 30 because I like getting a good range of smells. And then topped up with filtered water or cooled boiled water. You can use... Uh, vinegar instead of the on guard cleaning concentrate, but I find the on guard cleaning concentrate is a better cut through. We actually have the on guard in there, which includes the oils such as the cinnamon, the clove, the eucalyptus, the tea tree. We know we're cutting through because we've seen that proven, and now we're actually getting a deep clean. This is not transitioning to a natural product that is not working. This is transitioning to a product that is still going to work. It is going to clean your germs from your house, it's going to lift the mold, it's going to lift the grease. We are cutting through. If you're using other brand oils, I don't, I don't care. And I'm putting my hands up to say, I don't care what you're using. Do you have the testing for me? Can you show me that they actually work? Can you show me that they're not harmful? Can you show me that they're 100% pure? And if you can't, you need to ask yourself the question, why am I using something that I don't know what the ingredients are when you're trying to move into a place of being more empowered? If you don't know the ingredients, you shouldn't be using it. All right, the next one is cleaning paste. So this is baking soda, castile soap or castile soap, sorry, I always say it wrong, uh, water, vinegar, and then five to 10 drops of lemon. I love lemon in this. You can also use something like Purify, but this is a beautiful cleaning paste. It actually feels really nice to use and you're using something so soft. You can use it with your own hands. You don't have to put gloves on. You don't have to put a mask on and just make sure you wash your hands after. So easy. Carpet freshener. We're going to go through this later in the week as well. This is one of my favorites. It's so easy. I'll show you how to make it later. And white oils, I mean, look at this. This is on guard for an example. This is a test piece of bread. I love this picture. It's so potent and it shows our control piece of bread. So you're showing that there's no mold pairing where he has put the on guard. And this was somebody, somebody's husband that was skeptical. So on guard we know is working. We know it's great. It was sold out during the pandemic and it'll probably be sold out again. So always make sure that you get one every month. Um, just to stock up. And then you can, of course, share it with your friends and family and you can make so much out of On Guard. And it has a whole range of products, including your toothpaste, your laundry powder, uh, of course, the cleaning concentrate I showed you. Also throat drops, beadlets, the list goes on. Hand sanitizer is our number one product. Nearly done. Can you please um, put these together? Because I want them to be. Okay, well, this is not helpful because I've got to do a video, so I'll do it later. Don't please. They don't go together. I don't go together. Off you go. You're not helping me. Okay? Off you go. One. Two. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so you can see a few examples of how these oils are actually working for us. Lemon is a really good cut through. This is going to cut through our grease. It's going to cut through our germs it's going to actually be a good detoxifier and this is why we say put it in glass or aluminium because if you are putting something in plastic if that is a low grade plastic high grade plastics you can still use but if you are using a low grade plastic putting your essential oils in there these guys are going to eat through the toxins in that plastic as well and then you're going to end up having either if you're using a crappy kmart diffuser you're going to have the 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 plastic from that diffuser go into your air or if you're using a spray bottle, you want to have the plastic from that spray bottle now sprayed all over your countertop. So when you're trying to eliminate these toxins from your life, you need to try and take the steps that are going to give you the best outcome and not redo the problem. I've got some great blends down there as well. And I have these available in another album for my team. Um, peppermint tea tree. These are my favorites, you guys, because they are just Peppermint is so refreshing to use in the kitchen. It's great at keeping away ants. Uh, on guard, we spoke to it a little bit before as well. But tea tree, this one is our, you know what tea tree is good for. This is our antibacterial, our antimicrobial. We're actually getting to the point here with tea tree. Tea tree is also in on guard as well. Um, so why do we use doTERRA? Because they are actually good quality. They are actually sourced from where the plant is indigenously grown if not the best spot, they treat it like wine guys. So if you're a wine lover, you're going to know, okay, well, I know where I need to get my reds from and where I need to get my whites from and what 
soil it needs to be and temperature and when how often it's raining and that's why you know you have a good batch and when you have a poor batch and what the year was means a lot for those grapes which means a lot for your wine and that's exactly the same with a plant it's no different they are plants they're going to be good some years and different other years and we need to know what we are doing with them there's no middleman there's no middleman bottling these oils doTERRA is there doing the work planting the trees planting the plants sourcing them cutting them down replanting them making sure that they have big teams that are putting towards looking after the environment that they are actually taking the plant from making sure they are rejuvenating that environment in some cases well in one two thirds of what they actually source comes from third world countries so you can imagine the farmers and how they are actually given back in those situations but the other side of that is when we have Oh, I forgot my point there. Um, but we have around 54 different types of testing per batch. We can look up the batch number on the bottles. The quality of doTERRA is now the best in the world. So you want to see other big companies and say, but what about so-and-so? Well, what about so-and-so? They've been around for longer. Yeah, they might have been around for longer, but they haven't done as good a job. They have not gotten to this point where they have 9 million customers around the world that are having actual results happen. But I do stress safety and I do stress dilution. This is what is important to me and it should be important to you. You are using something natural. It doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. It means that you need to be empowered within yourself to make sure you are using something you're comfortable with, your family's comfortable with, and you're doing your homework to make sure you are using something safe. You're using something diluted. I cannot stress that enough. But when we're using it for cleaning, let's do it. Let's get into it. We know these guys work. We know they're cut through. We're going to use them for our cleaning. We're going to see results. And we're not going to look back. We're not going to go to the supermarket and buy that stuff. And your nose is going to become more sensitive. You're going to go and smell some of the perfume on and go, oh, that smells really wrong to me. My, I'm getting a bit of an itchy throat or I'm starting to get a bit hay fevery. You're going to get a headache when you start feeling like you're wearing something that you've washed in maybe your mum's washing liquid and you know that it's got perfume on it. You're going to start getting a headache from these things. No, they're not necessarily good things to have happen, but it means what is happening is working that your now toxic load is being reduced and your senses are starting to work how they're supposed to be working. That means when you're using the oils for your emotional state, you're actually having them go into your cells quicker. You're having a better result. Your health is better. It's easier to get energy. It's easier to think straight. It's easier to get up and do a workout and your entire world starts to come together. But you've got to do the work. You've got to be the empowered person doing it and taking the steps. I wish I could come into your homes. I wish I could make these products for you. I wish I could bin the stuff that I know is bad for your body, but that responsibility is on you. I want you to love this journey. I want you to do it as slowly or as quickly as you want to, but I want to make sure that every step you take, you are doing it with this gratitude for what this plant magic can do for us and making sure that what you're doing feels right in your gut and feels right in your heart, knowing you're making a better change for the world yourself and for all of us so thank you so much for listening i really hope you learned something and i want to wish you a beautiful day it's sunny here we're going to get outside and i hope you do too thanks so much